Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa jina naitwa Gabriel Kulunge. Sema hapo nimeandika hilo jina la sefu kwa sababu ndio jina langu la asili. La upande wa pili nilipotokea. Sasa hivi na mwaka wa tatu toka niingie upande huu mwingine. Lakini leo ni malangu ya tisa kuhudhuria katika kanisa hili. Mara ya tatu nikiwa ngara mtoni na mara ya sita nikiwa hapa. Namshukuru Mungu kwa matendo makuu aliyokuwa amenitendea. Lakini kwa siku ya leo nitataja mawili tu ambayo yalikuwa ni muhimu na ni mazito katika maisha yangu. Kupitia YouTube baba kuna siku moja nilikuwa nimeona kuna hotuba yake katika mahubiri yake alisema kwamba kuna mtu wamefungiwa nyota zao na maisha yao yamefungwa juu ya mti kwenye liboma fulani limekaa huko juu lakini kumbe anavyosema vile ile mimi ni jozi iliyokuwa imesha hii kunitokea zaidi ya mara sita kwamba natafuta wapi kwenye asili ya maisha yetu yalipofungwa na madhabahu ambayo tulikuwa tuyajui nashukuru Mungu nikawa nimefunguliwa na nikapagundua kwa sababu nikilosa kwenye maboma ya mkonge huko Mungu alimtendea mema na nikayagundua na nashukuru Mungu sana. Amen. Mr. Seth, give glory to God for what he have done to his life. He was listening to Bishop Elbarik Sumbe while the man of God was praying about the people that their star have been bound, their favor been taken and also their life have been bound by the altar, some of the altar that they have that attend sometimes ago. So he he realized that and he knew it was one of them and he give glory to God because he was delivered since then. Shuda ya pili ni kutokana na theme na ilokuwa imefanyika kwa muda siku tatu hapa. Kwa kweli nashukuru Mungu hii madhabahu sio ya kuichezea. Na kila siku unapotaka kuja hapa jitahidi kuonekana we ni mgeni kuliko ukijifanya mwenyeji. Kuna mambo makuu mengi sana yanaweza kakutokea bila we mwenyewe kujijua au ukijua hutoamini kama ni kweli lakini mimi namshukuru Mungu kuna vitu ambavyo vimenitokea binafsi uwezi ukaamini lakini ndio ukweli juzi wakati baba anafanya ibada ya siku ya pili ya semina aliingia hapa na akasema leo kuna vitu tofauti sana msishangae na badilika badilika kila wakati lakini yote ni Mungu anataka mimi nifanye kile ninachoamini wakati anainuka baba anakuja hapa mimi nilimwangalia katika sura ya kawaida Nikaanza kimoyoni nikasema ah, baba leo kavaa kawaida ili kanisa kubwa na mea angekuwa ni makanisa mengine huko angetiga bonge alisuti na nini na nini sasa mbona kavaa tu suruali yake ya blue na shati lake jekundu sasa nikawa nasema kimoyoni nikiamini kwamba huko nilipotoka mtu anayeamini anaisimamia kanisa kubwa kama hili hawezi kuwa kama vile ghafla nikaona machozi yakanibadilika alafu nikabadilika sasa yule mtu nilikuwa namuona alikuwa amevaa zile nguo amekuwa amevaa nguo nyeupe nashindwa kumuona Amen 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 Glory to God The second testimony that have been seeing God through this seminar he said on the second day uh, of this seminar we had that just finished yesterday he saw the man of God uh, coming on the altar and he starts saying in his mind this is a man of God that has this church is very big with a lot of people but he's just wearing simple uh, if it was as a church or as a ministry he would have been wearing a very uh, high suit but this one is very simple immediately he saw his eyes was like changed and he started seeing the man that he was seeing very simple he was wearing white clothes and he, there was light on him he couldn't even look at him glory to god ilipofika muda mimi nikaa pale mstari wa tatu kwenye hapo nikimwangalia yeye macho yanakataa na fumba macho machozi yanantoka niki nikiinama chini naona amekuja amenikumbatia anasema kwa nini ukutoa ushuhuda ili uweze kufunguliwa sasa hapo nikawa na wakati mgumu. Nikimwangalia siwezi kumuona kwa sababu analiflect rangi tofauti na vile nilivyokuwa namuona. Lakini nikiinama naona kwamba ananifuata pale. Nilikwambia utoe ushuhuda. Sasa kama wewe uwezi kutoa ushuhuda mimi nakupa ushuhuda wangu ili wewe utoe ushuhuda wako. Amen. As the service was going on he couldn't even look the man of God when he tried he sees there is a very light thing that he couldn't look at him when he closed his eyes he feels the presence of the man of God and tell him I gave you the testimony I want you to testify so that's why he's here basi nilipotokea namna hiyo baba wakati anatoa ushuhuda wake na mimi ananikumbusha kwamba ulipaswa utoe ushuhuda ili 
watu waone kile ambacho ulichokuwa umetendewa na mlichokuwa mmetendewa ni kweli katika semina ile nilichokuwa nimenufaika kwanza nimefunguliwa kilo kwa kwa njia ya macho na kwa njia ya maono jambo ambalo zamani nilivyokuwa kwenye madhabao mengine walinipa mpaka majo na nini nilikuwa sijui kwamba kwa sababu gani lakini nilikuwa najua labda kwa kuwa labda nilikuwa najitolea tolea sana na nini pamoja na kwamba nilikuwa na uwezo wa kuweza kufanya vitu vingine tofauti lakini jeuzi nilipokuja hapa nilikaanza kuona naweza kuongea na baba amen he give glory to god because during the seminar he have understand uh, that he was serving god before but it's different to this level that he is right now god deliver his eyes spiritually glory to god basi wakati anafanya hivyo nilinitoe ushuhuda nikakumbuka kwamba katika familia yetu hakuna mtu aliyewahi kufikisha miaka sabini. na wale waliokuwa wamefikisha miaka hiyo ya sabini, walikuwa ni bibi zangu lakini wote walikufa katika ugonjwa wa ajabu wote walikuwa ni vichaa Hakuna mtu ambaye anatoka katika miaka ikishafika miaka hamsini kwenda mbele wanakuwa ni vichaa na sasa hivi imebadilika so vichaa tena. Wanapalala hizi miguu, wanapata vifafa vya ukubwani. Jambo ambalo lilinisumbua sana jinsi ya kuweza kuona na ndicho chanzo cha kwanza kujua uokovu ni nini baada ya kuona upande wa pili nimehangaika sana ili kumsaidia marembo baba yangu ambaye nilishindwa kufanya mafanikio hayo. Amen. Also, when the man of God was giving his testimony on the second day, then he, real, he realized the curse that was happening into his family where he comes from because most of the family members were mad and from then they were paralyzed uh, from uh, the west all the way to down. Bibi zangu walikuwa na magonjwa fulani. Uwezo ukaamini kwamba akienda aja ndogo wanatoka kitu fulani chini kama mtu ametaka kujifungua. Magonjwa ndio yalikuwa yanawamaliza hayo. Alafu hawa wengine sasa hivi wana paralyze, yani wanatoka nyonga, wanaumia, kila mtu ana ugonjwa wake. Lakini mimi marehemu baba yangu mzazi alipata ugonjwa wa kifafa. Baba yangu alikuwa manager wa benki. Alipata ugonjwa wa kifafa, ukaanza ukumsumbua ukubwani. Jambo ambalo lilianza kuleta matatizo sana mpaka nikaanza kutafuta sosi ya matatizo haya ya kwapi. Nikapata watu wakaniambia tafuteni laana labda hiyo ni laana kwa sababu vifo vingi vinavyotokea kwenu ni vifo vya ajabu ajabu. Nikaanza kuitafuta hiyo laana na Mungu alinisaidia. Baada ya kuipata hiyo laana ikagundulika bibi yangu mzaa baba. Kaka yake alikuwa muindaji. Wakati wanaenda kuinda alipata mtu jilani ambaye ni rafiki yake wanaenda kuinda to. Wakienda kuinda wote wanapata nyama nyingi. Akienda kuinda peke yake anapata nyama kidogo. Kilicho uja kutokea akaenda kwa waganga kumwambia kwamba yule unaenda naye ndiye ndagu yako. Yaani ndagu unajua kwamba yule ndio nyota yako inayokusababisha we upate mali nyingi. Kwa hiyo tafuta uwezekano toa damu yake ili uendelee kupata mali. Amen. So he understood uh, the curse that was going on in the family is due to the sacrifice that his elders once made. Wakamuua yule mtu baada ya kumuua yule mtu ndugu zake wakaanza kumtafuta kwa sababu alienda kumuulia polini watu hawakujua pale kijijini. Baadaye ikaja kugundulika kwamba walivyokuwa naangaika kwa njia za kitamaduni kwa sababu zamani miaka ya msini huko njia nyingi zilikuwa zinatumika za kitamaduni wakatufata kwenye ukoo wetu wakasema nyinyi mmemuua ndugu yetu babu wakakataa akaambia wewe mmemuua babu yetu na ndugu yetu wamekataa wakasema sasa mtaona uwezi ukaamini baada ya wiki mbili nyumba kumi na nane za ndugu zetu ziliungua moto kwa wakati mmoja kwa saa moja na kwa siku moja uh, so because his grandfather sacrificed human blood that means he killed someone to be able to be rich he wanted to be wealthy so he killed he sacrificed somebody so after that his uh, grandmothers and aunt and our elder uh, uh, brothers or family members have been dying by sickness a very weird sickness some of them when they go to the toilet they'll just be something like a woman giving birth and they just die with a very scary uh, death but also the same day uh, that uh, there was a witch doctor that this, uh, found out that there was the grandfather sacrifice a person blood uh, blood of a person he said you're going to see on that day there were eight 
eight, uh, 19 houses that got, got burned on the same day. Kicho tokea wakabidi wa ame kijijini ndio tukatoka sehemu za karibu na Mgeta tukahamia Morogoro mjini. Lakini kila mwaka kukao kuna tokea vifo vine mpaka vitano vya mfululizo. Tukaanza kujitafuta sababu ni nini? Wakaanza kuingia kwenye mizimu na kuweza kuyaabudu. Wakiabudu mizimu wanakufa watu wane kwa wakati mmoja. Wasipoyaabudu wanakaa lakini wanakuwa vichaa. So from then people have been dying on his family. When they go to do their sacrifice or to worship, to give the worship to the idols, people won't die, they'll just get mad. But if they stop worshiping to the idols or gods, people dies. Likatokea hilo kwa bibi zangu, likaja kwa baba zangu. Hivi leo ni siku ya 60, nimemaliza baba yangu. Baba yetu wa mwisho amefariki dunia. Lakini vifo vyao ni vibaya sana. Sijawahi kuona vifo vibaya kama vinavyotokea katika familia yetu. So he lose a lot of family members. His uncles, last uncle just died recently. They have been dying very bad and scary death. Very bad death that have been happening to his family. Amina. Ndio maana mtumishi wa Mungu alikuwa anafundisha juu ya laana ya maagent ambayo sasa vile ambavyo yule baba alivyofanya ikawa sababu ya laana kubwa kwenye ile familia lakini sasa huyu kwa sababu amekuja nami nitakuwa ndio mwisho wa hiyo laana amen that's why the man of god was teaching about curse that happens by, by the enemies but it's because his grandfather did something and they welcomed the cast now it was tormenting and taking the family members ndugu zangu wote wakifariki wakitaka kuwa karibu na kufariki wanapigana na ukuta chumba unawaachia peke yao hawawezi kukana mtu wanapigwa wanapigana uwezo kaona wanapigana na nani mpaka umauti unafata baba yangu mzazi alipata matatizo ya kupinduka utumbo mimi ndo mtoto wa kwanza niliwaambia ndugu zangu tusimpeleke huyo hospitali kwa sababu kipindicho nimeshaanza kumjua Yesu akawa analipa maono na kuniambia mkimpeleka huyo mnamuua wakakataa wakanizunguruka walivompeleka kule nani mwimbili ilibidi mimi mtoto wa kwanza niende kutia saini uwezo kuamini wakati natia saini na uona na muua baba yangu mzazi unatia saini huku naona baba anakufa jambo ambalo nilinipa wakati mgumu sana na nikaanza kuomba ili jinsi gani ya kubadilisha mambo yale yasiweze kuendelea Mungu alinisaidia siku ya kwanza baba alishindwa kufanyiwa operation kwa sababu pressure ilikuwa juu. Siku ya pili naendelea na maombi ili kubadilisha hiyo attitude. Nivoenda kulala asubuhi watu wakaenda wakamfanyia operation. Nikarudi kwa Mungu kumuuliza, "Mbona mmemfanyia operation baba yangu bila hivyo?" Baba akazinduka muda muafaka. Nikaamini amepona. Siku ya kwanza, ya pili, ya tatu Baba yangu amekufa nimemkuta amemfunga kwenye miti kwenye kitanda alikuwa na luka luka ovyo mpaka nikasema nini sasa maisha gani haya baba yangu alikuwa meneja wa benki alikuwa ni mtu mzito mno leo anakufa kifo cha ajabu namna hii kwa kweli ili niuma sana <laughs> Amen when you see a man in tears means sobbing when a lot of hardships he lost his father in a very di uh, difficult way because while he was dying he was jumping due to the curse he was tormenting none of the family member died a normal death laana yenye walali na piga ndo maana huwezi kujifungua hata kama alijitahidi kwa maombi lakini kwa kuwa amekuja hapa basi atafungua ameshafunguliwa once the curse have legal rights you gonna kill even if you, you pray you can't deliver yourself because this man is here before the eyes of God that's why he have been delivered we all give glory to God Nashukuru Mungu toka nije hapa kuna mambo mengi yamenitendea Mungu na nimebadilika kwa sababu kweli Mungu ananipenda baba naamini kwamba nitaendelea kuitumikia kanisa hili kwa nguvu na moyo wote kwa sababu nina mali kwa kweli Mungu amenijalia mali lakini ninacho pata kitatizo shughuli zangu aziendi kutokana na mazingira lakini nikasema hapana semina hii kama nilikuwa nimewanuia vibaya watoto wangu nimewatolea laana watoto wangu nitafunikwa na nitakuwa sawa watoto wangu nimewasomesha katika kiwango kigumu sana wamemoja na masters moja na degree 
lakini mali yangu zaidi ya milioni miatano watoto wangu hawataki kushiriki nami nikaanza kujiuliza why kwa nini watoto hawataki kuwa karibu na mimi baba yao nina mali za kutosha uwezi ukaamini sasa hivi na miezi saba nimefunga duka hapo Dodoma katika maduka kumi makubwa ya vifaa vya umeme Dodoma la kwangu lipo lakini nimelifunga kwa kuwa alina muhudumu watoto wamekataa kufanya kazi na mimi nikasema haiwezekani yupo Mungu atakayeweza kunikomboa ndio nilikuja kumuona na kumtafuta Amen also he wish for God to deliver his children He is here on behalf of his family. He wishes the curse that is taken out of his family to also deliver his children because he is wealthy but his children don't want to be part of the wealth that he has. Ile laana isinge sababu. Ile laana ilikuwa imewafunga na watoto. Kwa hiyo lazima usingefanikiwa mngefikia mwisho mbaya. Kini kwa kwa umesikiliza na Mungu akatoa maagizo. Naamini ushindi ni mkubwa sana. Is also the curse that bound the children also but because you're delivered also they're going to be delivered.